Hello friends, it's Dana Corsello, the Vicar of the Cathedral. Today is Monday, November 28th. It's also the beginning of Advent. It's the first Monday of Advent. And it's also the day where we celebrate in the Book of Lesser Feasts and Fasts, the feast day of King Kamehameha and his wife, Queen Emma. Now, for those of you who know me, you probably know I cannot pronounce anything. So I must have listened to how to pronounce that man's name 20 times. And I've actually been to Hawaii, so I may not say it many more times because um, it's just not my gift, pronunciation. But I think I got it well enough that first time. But he's, he and his wife are truly, really remarkable people, which is why I want to celebrate the feast day with you. But let me begin with these opening sentences. Come, Emmanuel, come dwell with me. Hope of the world and word of life. Come, Emmanuel, come dwell with me. Let us pray. Shepherd of Israel, may Jesus, who is Emmanuel and son of Mary, be more than just a dream in our hearts. With the apostles, prophets, and saints, Save us, restore us, and lead us in the way of grace and peace, that we may bear your promise in the world. Amen. And O so sovereign God, who raised up King Kama Kamea and Queen Emma to be rulers in Hawaii, and inspired and enabled them to be diligent in good works for the welfare of their people and the good of your church, receive our thanks for their witness to the gospel and grant that we, with them, may obtain the crown of glory that never fades away. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Redeemer, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God, forever and ever. Amen. The psalm appointed for today is Psalm 33, beginning at the 12th verse. The 33rd psalm, beginning at the 12th verse. Happy is the nation whose God is the Lord, Happy the people he has chosen to be his own. The Lord looks down from heaven and beholds all the people in the world. From where he sits enthroned, he turns his gaze on all who dwell on the earth. He fashions all the hearts of them and understands all their works. There is no king that can be saved by a mighty army. A strong man is not delivered by his great strength. The horse is a vain hope for deliverance, for all its strength it cannot save. Behold, the eye of the Lord is upon those who fear him and on those who wait upon his love, to pluck their lives from death and to feed them in time of famine. Our soul waits for the Lord. He is our help and our shield. Indeed, our heart rejoices in him, for in his holy name, we put our trust. Let your loving kindness, O Lord, be upon us as we have put our trust in you. And that's Psalm 33, beginning at the 12th verse. Truly beautiful. Um, and I think that psalm was assigned to King Kamakameha uh, the fourth and his bride Emma Rook because they truly lived an incredible godly and saintly life. So he ascended the throne, just a little background, in 1855, and he was only 20 years old. And he and Emma, his bride, they embarked on a path of altruism and unassuming humility for which they have been revered by their people. And he's the fourth. The year before, Honolulu, and especially its native Hawaiians, had been horribly afflicted by smallpox. The people, accustomed to a royalty which ruled with pomp and power, were confronted instead by a king and a queen who went about with a notebook in hand, it says, soliciting from the rich and poor funds to build a hospital, Queen's Hospital, named for Emma, which is now the largest civilian hospital in Hawaii. In 1860, it says, the king and queen petitioned the Bishop of Oxford to send missionaries to establish the Anglican Church in Hawaii. The king's interest came through a boyhood tour of England where he had seen in the stately beauty of Anglican liturgy 
a quality that seemed attuned to the gentle beauty of the Hawaiian spirit. England responded. They sent a priest and, uh, excuse me, a bishop and two priests. They arrived uh, in 1862 and they began preparations for a cathedral and a school and to translate the Book of Common Prayer in much of the hymnal. Um, his life, though, the king's life and her life, of course, were marred by the tragic death of their four-year-old son in 1863. Um, apparently, he had great depression. He barely survived his sadness. Um, his own death took place a year later, and instead of Emma ruling, she decided not to rule and committed her, good, her life to good works. She herself was responsible for building schools, churches, and efforts on behalf of the poor. She traveled around the country um, to raise money and to help her people, around the world actually. The Archbishop Longley of Canterbury said of her visit to Lambeth, I was much struck by the cultivation of her mind, but what excited my interest most was her almost saintly piety. The cathedral was completed after Emma died. It was named St. Andrews in memory of the king who died on that saint's day. Among the Hawaiian people, it says, Emma is referred to still as our beloved queen, our beloved queen. Now I'm sharing all this with you because I didn't know that. I did not know that history, that they were truly wonderful saints. I mean, they did the work. They really did the work and uh, tried to do what was best for their people. So now let us pray this morning. Lord Jesus, for our deepest and most holy longings we pray. Awaken us to our need of you in our lives, and you will give us your life. Move us with sorrow for the sorrow of the world, and you will make us strong through our tears. Give us humility to admit our failures, and you will bring treasure out of them. Make us hungry for justice, and you will give us food that lasts. Renew our will to be healers of creation, Help us to see others in the natural world through your eyes. And you will show us ourselves with love. And now, my friends, I invite you to add your own intercessions. What is it that you need this day? Who are you holding up? What's on your heart? And, of course, your thanksgivings. Show us how to practice what we preach, and we will see God in everyone. Support us in standing firm for truth, even when it costs, and the truth will also make us free. Bless these and all creation with your goodness, and renew our trust in your love. Amen. And now, my friends, I want to share something else with you. It's a little off topic, so to speak. But this is my charge for you this Monday and perhaps the rest of the week. And then I'm going to end with a prayer. Um, I saw this. I can't remember where I saw it. Um, but I can find out. It may have been Bishop Charleston. But I want you to practice this because I think as we head into Advent and we'll get more into the theology, I preached about this yesterday, um, but here's what I want to, to read to you. Today I will practice the spiritually subversive act of smiling. <laughs> the spiritually subversive act of smiling. I will face reality. I will recognize the depth of the problems around me and within me, I will understand how serious these problems are and I will engage them as such. But then I will smile. Even in the heart of all the problems of the world, I will smile. 
And by doing so, I will embody the subversive nature of spirituality. The smile has its own sacred reality, life in the midst of death, joy in the midst of sorrow, hope in the midst of chaos. I will seek to embody that to the world, to all those who need it so desperately. Today, I will smile. I want to leave that with you. So think of it, this week, I will smile. And I bet it will make you feel better too. And so now let me close with this prayer. For the bare trees in winter light, in the gentling of friends, we thank you, God. For the brightness of field and the warmth of the sun, we thank you, God. For the work to be done and laughter to share, we thank you, God. We thank you and know that through struggle and pain, in the slippery path of new birth, hope will be born and all shall be well. Hope will be born and all shall be well. And so my friends, in this Advent season, we say come, come Emmanuel and dwell with me. Hope of the world and word of life, come, come Emmanuel and dwell with us.